in enters a crate and they put the crate on the ground and they open it up and the painting is in the crate and there is absolutely nothing covering the painting. So I like kind of coming up, touching antennas. A museum show takes weeks to install, but an art fair must be installed in a matter of mere hours. Bringing all of this together while not damaging the art is nothing short of a miracle. But how does this all happen? Well, if you chill the fuck out for a second, I will tell you. Woo! Sorry, guys. Oh, God. It yeah. comes from the heart. Yes. That's the matters. The thought that counts. I think that traditionally artists uh, have not liked art fairs. Um, I think that there's, that's enduring, but def definitely there's been some softening. Welcome to Anatomy of an Art Fair. What, you thought art fairs installed themselves? You think art just jumped up on the walls, do ya? They're installed by real people with card hearts and steel toe shoes, blue tape and screw guns and calluses on the hands. The guys who go home and drink beer and smoke weed to pass out only do it again in the morning, see? There are a lot of moving parts to an art fair. The dealers, art handlers, critics, conservators, lawyers, collectors. Oh yeah, and the artists, the ones who make the fucking work. Yeah, fucking smoke that, you motherfuckers. Art Handler Fun Fact. <laughs> Let's not talk about the art fairs. At art fairs, artists, collectors, handlers, and critics all come together. Did you know? Did you know that an average of 3,000 art handlers a year die while practicing their trade? So many that if you were to stack them on each other's shoulders, they should reach 18,000 feet. That's the height of 32 George Washington monuments, 13 Freedom Towers, 1,153 Bigfoot monster trucks, and 2,306 actual Bigfoots, Yetis. The post-war years saw a shift in the appetite for avant-garde art from Europe to the United States, particularly in New York City where abstract expressionism created a void for the former art meccas of Paris and Berlin. London wasn't quite the right fit at the time, so the entrepreneurial Rudolf Zwirner and Heinz Stunk launched their initial efforts in Cologne. The year was 1967. Over the 30 years that I've been doing this, uh, I'd say the, the first 27 years, it felt completely vulgar to call an artist and ask them to create a work of art for an art fair. Um, in the last three to five years, it's absolutely imperative. There's been a dramatic shift in attitude towards art fairs. Once considered a supplement to Gallery's bottom line, it is now the bottom line. In an art fair, you know, very often you see one piece by an artist and if you don't know the work, you can't put it into context. So for us, it's very difficult, if not impossible, to sell us a work by an artist where there's just one piece and we don't have access to see uh, the context, what they do, the range. That's what sort of whittled down the traffic, the foot traffic to galleries, the fact that, in fact, they don't need to show up at, uh, at at Jim's gallery or at somebody else's yeah. gallery every every two or three months from Chicago or from London or from Timbuktu they can see everything. when they can go to Miami and they can go to Freeze and they can go to the Armory and basically take care of business three times over the year. Already it's been derivative. done. Derivative. It's derivative. That's the worst insult in the art world. Welcome back to Anatomy of an Art Fair. The collectors can already see a JPEG pretty easily. Um, and many of them will have seen a lot of the work in this fair already on JPEG, but they're coming because you can't feel a work, you can't experience its scale, you don't really know whether you want it or not, unless you're really familiar with uh, the artist's work and you've already seen something very similar. It's very hard to commit to it from um, a computer screen. Ultimately, art fairs are about and for the collectors. Over the years, fairs have grown and adapted to the changing tastes and habits of those VIP collectors, determining its success and failure. Art collectors and the world's high net worth individuals 
have transformed the commercial art world through their preferences and acquisitions, driving the agendas of art fairs, while the artists remain dying from tuberculosis. In the wild, collectors are docile creatures, but they come out during art fair season seven times a year to mate and battle for territory. Artist is making work because he's chosen to communicate in that way as opposed to the way I communicate, which is through, you know, a normal business environment, right. probably. It's, you know, they have certain tools or certain deficits which they're taking advantage of in other ways. And that's the great beauty of it, is that, you know, they're the people who didn't necessarily fit, in, fit the mold that we all did and um, have taken advantage of that. The people who become the artists are the people who really can't see doing or expressing themselves in any other way. If there were an easier way to, to make a life for right. yourself and support yourself, support your family and feel decent about what you get out of it and do every day, I think they would be doing it. Of course, there would be no fair without art itself. Artists spend years developing their ideas and personal style before it finds its way onto the gallery walls at fairs. When I'm at an art fair, I find that I don't look at art, I can't look at art, I can only look at the art fair. I mean, art fairs, they are what they are, and they're, you know, they serve a purpose, and you get to see a, a tremendous amount of work within a small period, and I don't think anyone should change going to museums or galleries, but it's nice to have that option as well. So do you think art fairs should come with a warning label? I think everything should come with nothing. Cologne. Cologne, Kunst Market Cologne, essentially a move to, to have uh, uh, German art dealers uh, get a corner on contemporary art, take it away sort of from the School of Paris. Um, and, and they set in motion this very transparent model for declassing somehow, for making transparent um, uh, the gallery. Dealers keep the art world moving. Artists are notoriously poor salesmen. Without dealers, the work would never leave the studio, nor would the artist, which would then lead to greater depression, bed sores, contracting tuberculosis, and ultimately death. And it's extremely important that we look great. Because not only is there the component of how you look to the collector, it's that the competition to get mm -hmm. into these fairs and to stay in the fairs is extremely intense. The pressures on dealers are immense. As gallery-based transactions are replaced by deal makings at these global art fairs, dealers are forced to compete for prime position, hence the money shot. Having an on-site presence has never been more essential, for this is where commerce lives. Well, I love leaving my office because I'm always alone, you know, I'm constantly alone. I, I think it has to be said that, you know, this is a very large market right now and the number of places in history that we're all vying for. There are very few spots. So that kind of expression, there'll be a couple, only, you know, 10 to 20 people in a century that have that. That's all, that's, there are a lot more people in that fair. <laughs> Derived from the Greek word kritikos, the critic's role is to lead discussions and often draw attention to parts of the fair they deem noteworthy. And I really enjoy it for the first 40 minutes, a lot. And then you want to be alone again? Well, I have that problem. I'm not well adjusted um, socially, I, I, so... You know, if you're a dealer in San Francisco, you might not get that much footfall, but if you're participating here at NADA, or at Freeze in London, or Lista in Basel, Switzerland, then you're more likely to be developing an international collector base for your artists. I'm here with Sam, an art handler. How are you today, Sam? Living the dream. The American dream? Uh, sure, why not? Can you explain to the people what it is that you do? Oh man, uh, we move stuff from one place very carefully and then walk with it and then put it in another place also very carefully. So you're like a drug mule? Mm, yes, but the money's not that good. There's so much valuable artwork at high-profile art fairs that it takes dozens of insurers to underwrite the collective value of the fair. Fortunately, there are skilled handlers like these. 
Art handlers are often the hidden hand with a rubber yellow glove behind an art fair. Like a doctor checking for an enlarged prostate, art handlers move valuable work through a fair in just a matter of days. Art handling at an art fair is not for the faint of heart. Nor should you apply if you are on heart medication, have pre-existing conditions, or if heart disease runs in the family. In a matter of just days, an entire fair must be received, unpacked, installed, deinstalled, reshipped, on the wall, taken down, put back up, and taken down again over 500,000 times. And finally, behind every art fair, there are art handlers. Legions and legions of art handlers waking up at noon so they can get the art fair ready by nine. comes to this question of indemnification. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Contracts indemnification is the part of the agreement that provides for the one party to bear the monetary cost or either directly or reimbursement for the loss incurred by the second party. What's a switch out? A switch out is replacing the sold work with new work from the gallery's inventory. This is usually performed before the fair reopens. Thanks, Carrie. This is a DJ Mayonnaise Hands party pack. And the success of the art fair. People are buying a lot more quickly. You mentioned buying with your ears as opposed to buying with your eyes, meaning that you're basically buying because somebody told you that somebody's hot, not because you're looking right, at right. something that's particularly, you know, galvanizing for you. Exactly. Yeah. It happens less frequently because email has become the dominant form of communication. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think the elephant in the room here is that the art fairs are the great form of competition for the dealers against the auctions. We secretly replaced Carrie's regular roundtable discussion with DJ Manny's Hands Brown roundtable discussion. Let's see if she notices the difference. And the auctions are this completely arbitrary moment where someone has to make a decision. There is an impending event. Either they raise their paddle or they do not. Right. We, as dealers, don't have that prerogative. We can't, it's, it's, or I should say, it is difficult for us in, you know, um, in, 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 in good business interest to try and be that aggressive and so pushy to try and pin someone down immediately. Okay, no one gets out of here alive. Museums, galleries, and collectors, including auction houses, uh, they know that if there is an issue, whether it's a conservation issue or a damage. So go to Gloria when shit hits the fan. Step one, the artist creates a product, and overnight it turns into a kinetic sculpture or inert gas. Step number two, the work is wrapped, then consolidated at a warehouse like this. Step three, the work is loaded into the truck and transported to the fair. Gallerists send out JPEGs to uh, loyal collectors in advance so that they can uh, put reserves on the work that they'll be seeing at the fair. And the internet and the art fairs have grown up in tandem. We entered this world alone, we'll leave it alone, and we can only hope to leave it uh, covered in less goo and a little less screaming. I think an art fair kind of gives an opportune time to reach a large amount of people in a short span. You can lift with anything, but you have to tighten up your perineum. You can you can lift with your back, you can lift with your neck, you can lift with, you know, whatever. Somebody else's Otherwise stuff. Otherwise the pink sock is going to come out. Something. There is not a piece of plastic, and there is a nail that has been bent over and hammered down. And the curator and the registrar were all saying, see, this is so crazy. These commercial galleries, they don't know. <laughs> and today that is not the truth because we understand even more acutely what's involved and how you have to be so responsible to the objects. Sorry for the delay, boys. Seem to have been distracted by a series of margaritas. Not too sure how tequila is going to work out with the old colitis. Not even sure if I have colitis. Didn't the Beatles sing about that? Girls with colitis go by. Next track, track one, ready and willing. <laughs> 